Piero Tato. Um, first off, I'd like to thank um, uh, uh, Yosef and the EHF team for the invitation to come and uh, to the, our very gracious Maori host for the opportunity to present here. This, this presentation should come with a warning label. Um, I am what you could probably best call an enthusiastic tourist. Um, I've only spent a couple of months in New Zealand, so I'm going to give you my very limited perspective on what I understand. Please don't take offense if I got it wrong. So um, it was mentioned at the beginning of my introduction that I'm the president of a railroad. Uh, back in California, which is where I'm based, um, I have a bunch of railroads, I have a bunch of locomotives, and some time ago in the past, I realized that, wow, we're great as far as reducing emissions, but we could do better. So we became the first railroad in the United States to run on 100% biodiesel. Um, that was good. My friends then said, you know what? That, that comes out of food crops. You should do better. So we came up a way, with a way to make diesel out of garbage. And so that became a lot better. Um, but that was back in 2004. So I have been working ever since then, perfecting and developing the system, developing the technology. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about where we are at this point and how we might be able to provide a small solution to help here in New Zealand. Um, so our technology is called fast ox gasification. Right now, the world is producing about enough garbage to put a line of garbage trucks from Auckland to the very tip of South Island and back twice every single day. That's how much trash we're throwing away as a planet. It's about 2.2 billion tons uh, by 2025, according to the World Bank. That is a staggering amount of garbage. This is not something that's easily going away. Recycling is good, but man, we've got a lot of trash to deal with. What makes it worse is that trash makes methane, or methane. Um, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning. 16% um, of the, the greenhouse gases is that methane. Um, and what makes it even worse is that it's 86 times more potent a, a short-term climate change agent than carbon dioxide. The conversation while about CO2 is obviously very important, but as recent information is coming out, methane is the problem. That's the driving force. That's the one where the greatest return can happen in the shortest period of time. We need to impact this, and we need to move on it very quickly. The reduction in greenhouse gas from this space could be immense. As you all know, people that have been following the news, the start of 2018, China let the cat out of the bag. A lot of us felt really enthusiastic about the fact that, hey, we recycle. That's really good, right? Yeah, I was going to China and getting burned. They didn't want it anymore. They're trying to clean up their skies, and they're taking good steps there. But in ports all over the world, there are mountains of recycling that are piled up, which is really just a bunch of garbage that nobody wants anymore. We need a better solution. We need to do something because China won't take our garbage anymore. So we're drowning in garbage. As a planet, we need to do something better. New Zealand has a goal of zero waste. There are a lot of ways of getting there. The best way is get manufacturers to come up with better solutions so we're not getting waste in the first place. Reuse, fantastic solution. There is one of our fellows is going to be talking to you later about a fantastic way of taking organic waste and turning it back into soil. What could be better than that? There are a lot of fantastic solutions out there that we need to embrace but there's still this troubling lump of garbage left over in the end until we get our acts together as a planet to get rid of that waste in the first place. Um, so here's some numbers about New Zealand. Tenth highest per capita amount of production of waste in the world, five times the world's average. 3.6 kilograms a day worth of waste, producing about seven, 17,700 tons of garbage every single day, which is yielding about 38.7 million metric tons of carbon dioxide per year carbon dioxide equivalent in the form of methane, coming out of that waste, with over 1,000 landfills, and only 52 of them, I understand, actually currently have permits. The balance are dirt pushed over, methane still coming up out of the ground, and horrible stuff going into the groundwater. We need a solution. Um, New Zealand has got some of the best, uh, most ambitious environmental goals in the world, which we applaud, the 2035 goal, the 2050 goal of zero carbon. Um, but why don't we also address that 38.7 million tons of greenhouse gas coming out of the landfills at the same time? And my suggestion is, what if addressing that actually made the other solution even easier? So my point is that right now, New Zealand consumes 
million liters of diesel each day. It's the most consumed fuel in the country, and I understand that New Zealand imports 97% of that diesel from overseas. That's my understanding, I may have that wrong. Um, but what if a renewable substitute could be offered and made domestically and replaced all of it? This is my company, Sierra Energy. We've developed a technology that can take any kind of waste, and I mean that very strongly, any kind of waste, and turn it to clean energy. We've spent the last 14 years developing and improving the technology. We've built our first commercial facility in Monterey, California at Fort Hunter Liggett. This is a, an image of it. The physical facility takes about a quarter of an acre. The advantage of using this technology is it requires no sorting. Pull out whatever makes economic sense, whatever you've embraced as a society to take out of the waste stream. There are no emissions from the process itself. It's scalable from as little as 50 metric tons of waste per day. Very low maintenance, very simple. It's based on a blast furnace, very easy. Very low parasitic load, that's the amount of energy wasted um, build, running the process. And 100% of what you put in comes out as a saleable end product. Really simple process, process. Um, <laughs> waste goes in the top, you inject oxygen and steam at the bottom. The reaction of the carbon in the waste with the oxygen creates an enormous amount of heat. It's a chemical thing. When that happens, metal melts, inorganic, metal, uh, inorganic solids melt and turn into a liquid. You can recover all of them. The gas coming out is called a synthesis gas, which is carbon monoxide, that's the good one, CO, and H2, renewable hydrogen. You can make almost anything with that combination. In fact, you, we've tested a bunch of them. Some of the things that we've tested as a feedstock includes tires, uh, industrial waste, medical waste, hazardous waste, black bag garbage, TV sets, batteries. We operate at 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 2,200 degrees centigrade. At that temperature, everything breaks down. It's molecular recycling at its most fundamental level. What you can do with that, that synthesis gas you've made, uh, companies like Lanza Tech, which came out of New Zealand, can take that and turn it into ethanol or jet fuel. You can make uh, diesel. You can make electricity very easily. Um, you can make a cement replacement from the, the slag that comes out and is recovered. Uh, there's a bunch of things you can make with that. We obviously didn't get here alone. We've spent the last uh, 14, 15 years now with all of our university partners and people from industry that have helped us in developing this technology. It's been demonstrated. We're ready to go. And we have 8,000 requests from around the world from people who are looking to, to use this technology. I happen to love New Zealand, the EHF, brought to me this awareness of this opportunity, maybe doing something really good, and perhaps take our technology and become sort of the first zero net energy, zero net waste nation on Earth. By the way, we have a calculator online. Thousands of people use this and calculate what the local economics would be of using this technology in your community. But what if New Zealand were to become the first zero waste nation on Earth, eliminate that CO2, replace its imported diesel, create at least 2,600 local jobs distributed, coincidentally, exactly where the waste is created. So in your small town, take your waste, create jobs, and make diesel right there in your community, or energy if that's more appropriate. It would allow you to recycle 100% of your waste. Oh, I've got to add this one piece. And by the way, guess who made this slide? One with no graphics. Um, you did it with zero public subsidy because this system is actually really profitable. You're getting paid to put material in, and you're getting paid for the material coming out. It's profitable. Public subsidy not required. So to do this would be an incredible achievement for any nation, right? Well, New Zealand's got a heck of a reputation of being first. So why not do it here in New Zealand? So that's my suggestion, a humble suggestion from an outsider looking in. But man, I would love to participate in something like that here. Um, I'm done. I made it with 16 seconds to spare. Um, and if you would like to learn more, our website is www.sierraenergy.com. Uh, my name is Mike Hart, and I'll give you my email address. It's mike at sierraenergy.com. So if there's any way I can help uh, New Zealand in any way try to solve this really challenge, uh, great challenge, please, I'd be happy to help in any way I can. Kia ora.